Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining me. If you've ever lost a drone and have not been able to recover it, then this video is probably going to interest you. This is not your average uh, drone recovery system. The Marco Polo tracker from Eureka Technologies uses an RF tag as well as a dedicated tracking device. Oh, and before I get too far into this, I should say thanks again very much to uh, Southwest FPV for uh, providing me with this uh, awesome little device. So yeah, thanks again. Uh, much appreciated, buddy. So let's just cover what you get in the package first. Uh, you get the dedicated tracking device with a lanyard. Operating instructions and a quick reference manual to get started easily. And this is really all you need is the quick reference manual. Uh, it comes with two RF tags, or at least the one that I got um, comes with two RF tags. Some uh, Velcro with an adhesive backing to attach the RF tags to things. And then it also comes with two USB chargers and cables to charge because you can charge both the, the tags as well as the tracker, get charged by those USBs. Okay, I have it in mind that the range was about two miles, so several kilometers. I'm going to have to look up here what the, uh, what the range was on it, and then I'll uh, put that up on screen. So the tracker itself is really easy to use, and uh, same thing with the tags. All you do to turn the tag on is press and hold the button. And those flashes there, the one, two, three, one, two, three, tells you how much uh, of a charge it has. Um, one flash means it's low and needs to be charged, two is medium and three means it's fully charged. Uh, the tag battery will run one month in monitor and 10 days in standby and three days in like the actively tracking thing. So you can, uh, you can lose your, you can lose your drone, come back a week later and still be able to look for it. So even if you have to go back to Try to find your drone after losing it and say you can't find it. Go back home, go to work for the week, come back next weekend, and the uh, tracker will still be working. As long as you had it fully charged when you, uh, when you put it on the, on the drone. And the locator will run, I keep calling this the tracker, but this is the locator. The locator will run for eight hours. Yeah. Or three days in track. Oh, eight hours in search. That's just actively searching. So it only does that for a couple of, for a minute or two. So it will run for three days in track mode. And the oh, I guess then they match it up then too, because the uh, the tag will also run for three days in track mode. But if you're not actively tracking it and it's just sitting, so in standby, then it's ten days. So I guess that's why it lasts for uh, 10 days in standby mode. I'm pretty sure this, the big lump in the middle there is probably uh, the battery. So I'm trying uh, an outdoor test here of the Marco Polo tracker. You can see that it just flashed there. I'll wait for another flash just to show that it's in standby. So I've already turned it on and it flashed three times to show it's got full battery. There we go. So we know it's in standby. All right. And, uh... Aaron, do you want to take that and uh, hide it behind, uh, like under a log or behind a log or something? And we'll, I'll go over here and uh, try to find it. <laughs> so I'm going to go over this, this way for a ways and uh, I think go over and get behind these logs over here. Finished doing some uh, flying along the river here, just uh, testing out some different GoPro mounts and uh, getting some footage flying over the river. 
I'm going to keep walking away, but uh, I'm going to turn it on as I'm walking away here. Let's uh, turn it on. Oh, I got to hold it. There we go. And uh, I think it was tag one that was over there. So I'm going to press one and uh, track is flashing. So I'll press select. And now you can see the top, it says it's searching. I think I can short press this button at the top to get the backlight on. Let's just let it finish searching. This is 35%, 50%. But no arrow. Oh, there's an arrow. 43% and the arrow's back. Going behind us. I'm gonna just turn the backlight on here. There we go. So now it's gonna show up better. But uh, I'm gonna keep walking way more and go to behind these logs and see how it does. Oh, it's crazy, this giant, giant pile of logs that the uh, river put up here. Because in the, in the summertime, I'd be standing in the water right now. Alright, so I just spent uh, four or five minutes walking. Walking away. And I'm behind this, uh, let's get a little more behind this pile of trees. So I know uh, Aaron put the uh, drone and tracker over there somewhere. So it's, it's somewhere on the opposite side of these, all these trees here. So now that I'm behind all these trees, when I was behind some of the trees, it was showing me an arrow still. Oh, there, look, it's even got an arrow now, even behind all this. Try turning. So I just turn 90 degrees and yeah, the arrow's still uh, pointing back towards the, the right direction. No, it's trying to decide between like a 30 degree range there or something, but yeah, it seems to keep staying on that side. And that's, yeah, again, I'm, uh, I'm uh, maybe not quite half a kilometer away, probably about close to half a kilometer away. And I've got all these tons of thick, heavy trees here between us. Now I'm uh, kneeling down near the ground, just so there's even more trees between us and the arrow is still working. And it keeps staying at around 40%, give or take a little bit. So now follow it over this way a bit. Well, the arrow's not quite going the right way, but even if you follow the arrow that direction, if it's not quite the right direction, it'll uh, readjust. You can see it uh, quickly readjusted. It's telling me to go more to the left now. Oh, there's no arrow for a second, so let's stand here. It's saying to go this way. I think I'm gonna stay to the right side though and go around. The trees this easier way. Now let's see if it's the percentage has gotten a little bit higher. It's saying to go this way. Okay. Oh, now it's saying to go this way. So there's a little bit of left and right as you're following the arrow. Yeah, it's kind of doing it again I have to go around this tree. Oh, now it's saying a little more to my right. Let's try turning to the right now. That says change location, so I'm going to try again. So uh, there's a big puddle here. 
I don't want to walk through now. Let's get over here a little higher up now and see, see what it says. Go this way, just to the left a bit. Okay. And it says in the instructions, you know, if there's a, an arrow and then the arrow doesn't, the arrow goes away, then uh, just keep going in the last known direction of the arrow. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so let's keep going straight. My uh, this phone might turn off before I get there. Oh, turn to the right a little bit. Maybe I uh, shouldn't have gone so quite so far away. The cold's really hard on batteries. It's kind of going left and right there. Let's turn to the right now and see if it. Says 61% now, so we know that we're uh, closer because that's the highest number I've gotten so far. To my right a little. And straight. Oh, it beeped three times. I think that means it's at 68. And it's beeping three times, so that means we're getting close. One beep means you're far. Two means you're medium distance, and three means you're getting close. And now it's uh, the arrows just stay in there nonstop. There we go. So I'm going to turn the tracker off now. And uh, turn off the the tag. So you can see, it's uh, this thing works pretty well. Here, I'll show you how I've mounted it on my drone. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description for the uh, 3D print that I made for this. So you can see, I just attached it now to my uh, battery strap here, and uh, I just used a lighter to uh, really quickly heat up the heat shrink here and was able to get the antenna to want to turn upwards like this and yeah with the with the 3d print it it sits on there pretty nicely that's that's pretty pretty well attached it's got a couple of uh, slots for zip ties so the zip tie goes through and underneath the battery strap and then over top of the the tracking tag so when you do the zip tie up it presses against the tracking tag and it presses against the zip tie or, or sorry and it presses against the battery strap so that this this thing won't move or slide up and down you don't have to worry about this thing it's pretty securely held on there i think that uh you know usually we're around about where the battery straps are there's often a little bit of space between the props there, so that kind of works. It doesn't really get in the way of the airflow of the for the props. The only real downside to this amazing little invention is uh, the fact that it's it's rather expensive. I believe it retails for uh, three hundred and sixty nine dollars US for the locator and two RF tags. And this is the. There's, because there's a couple of different versions. This is the MP201RC. This version of, of RF tag is the, the one you get when you get the RC version. I'm not sure if many people know about it, so yeah, I just thought I'd let everybody know that it's out there. If you're flying long range and you've, especially if you've got a, like a bigger, more expensive long range build, and you know, now with, putting a brand new GoPro on it and so on, that's that's getting to be fairly expensive. So if you have if you have a couple of those, uh, it's it's almost starting to sound sort of worth it to get to get a couple of these tags and, and put it on a couple of your more expensive quads.
I'm also working on a more expensive octocopter build, so I'm uh, definitely going to be putting one of these on that. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.